Hello there folks. Here's a quick video today to show how to use the behavior movement in Crimson 3.0 software. So uh, I've got a couple examples here I want to do. First of all what I'd like to do is make a solid set point like that has a, a value that sits at a certain number on here based on uh, where we set it at. So for instance if I go over to data tags on the left I'm going to go ahead and create a new tag. I'm going to call it set point just for giggles. The temp f that you see here is from uh, many of my classes where we take a type j thermocouple input from a input module on the back of the HMI. That's what I have run right now. Um, but what I'd like to do is take the set point, make it for one a retentative value, and I want for it to get its min and max values from temp f. If you notice here, if I click on temp f, if I go to the format tab, I've already got it formatted as a numeric type right here. And I've set it up for three and one. And I've already put a min and max of 600 and 1,000, which with these two options here, team, means that this is 60.0 and 100.0. So I'm going to make, I'm going to copy those settings over to set point simply by doing this. Clicking on set point on the left, right click on it and say copy from. Select copy format. If you notice right here, my mouse looks like a normal mouse, but if I go over here, I have a trailing X. It's asking me who do you want to copy the format from? So I will click on temp F. Boom. That takes care of that. Now, if I go to display pages, I'm going to drag set point out here like so from the right, drag it out here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this a little bit different. I'm going to leave that there like that. I'm going to go over to the right side, and I'm going, to, I'm going to go in the right side. I'll go to Symbol Factory, go into the category called Arrows. And if I slide down a little bit, I can find just a simple generic arrow. If I click on this one uh, one time, and you get all these different versions, I'll go ahead and drag. Maybe I'll do the uh, blue one out here like this. I'm going to make this a little smaller. And then I want to reverse the position of it or reverse the pointing. So I'm going to double click on this to bring up its properties. Go to the adjust field. Click the horizontal mirror, which will flip it over for me. Click OK. I'll click OK again. And now what I want is I want this thing and this thing to both go up and down based on the set point value. So I'm going to hold down the shift button, click this guy. And then I'm going to group both of these together by, boom, let me try it again here. This guy, this guy right here, shift. This one right here will do the group, or you can right-click and you can group. Once I group everything together, my goal is to make this thing go up and down like this. So once I have it all grouped together, I'm going to go to the behavior pull-down, choose add 2D movement. Notice it gives me a big red border. and and what it's doing here, it's letting you kind of move this item inside here. But what I like to do is I like to sh shrink it so it's kind of skinny like this. And then I'll place it here. And what I need to do is I need to stretch the bottom much bigger and stretch the top much bigger because I really need to find out where this thing lines up with my top and bottom. So watch this trick. Once I have the red and I've got the border much bigger, I'm going to click on this item one time, boom, which gives me the green border. Once I get the green border, I'm going to take this and drag it up to the top where I think close enough it'll line up to the 100. But here's the trick, folks. You're going to use your escape key, which is known now as the friendship key. Use your friendship escape key, and I'll click it one time, boom. I'll click it again, boom. And now that I get the red border, I'm going to grab this top here, and I'm going to drag this guy down just to where it starts to move, and then I'll place it right back there. That sets the top border for this. Then I'm going to click on this thing again inside, and I'm going to go ahead this time, and I'm going to drag it down below to where it lines up at the bottom. And then I'm going to use the escape key one time, boom. Escape one more time, friendship, escape key, boom. And then I'm going to grab the bottom here, and I'm going to go up a little bit, like so. All right. 
So that makes the border of this thing. Now what I need to do is I need to link the movement of this to the tag called set point. So I'm going to right click on this guy and go to properties. And I'm going to drag set point from the right side right here into the vertical field. Okay. However, here's a thing I'll tell you. When Redline designed this particular primitive operation, they set up the minimum to be the top and the maximum to be the bottom. That is totally opposite of my thermometer because I have the minimum down below and the maximum above. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag my uh, set point over here like this, both over here like this. But the minimum, I'm going to click out here a few times to where I get my cursor, and I'll do dot .max, boom, enter. And then down here, I'm going to do dot .min, enter. And that will flip those two for me. I'll click OK. And then since I got that, I'm going to use my, um, you know what, let's do this. Let's see how this going to work. Eh, I don't know if I like that team. Let me go ahead and move this over here like this so it's not blocking my current numbers. What I should have did is put a little space, but that's all right. Uh, and then now I'm going to go ahead and go to the right side, go to data tags on the right side. I'm going to drag the set point out here so we can see how this works. And I need to make this guy be a data entry field. So I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to go to the data tab where it says operation, choose data entry. Notice the background color gets inverted. And then I'm going to go to the format tab. I'm sorry, not format, but the figure tab. And remember, when I teach a class, if I have a field that's a data entry, I always like to give it a border so that the end user knows where to click or where to tap to get the keyboard to come up. So I'm going to give it a blue border, three pixels. There it is. Let's go ahead and download this to our HMI. Let's see how this works. So I got a web browser working here. And you can see right here, it was at 76 from previous example. So if I change this number to some other number, 85 for instance, you can see that it jumps up correctly. If I change it to something lower, maybe uh, 72, you can see it operates there. And of course, my thermometer operates correctly because I'm, I've got it connected to my card here, if you will. All right. So that's just a quick, easy way to use the behavior movement in Crimson 3. The one important part of this team is on your graphic, the part that everybody forgets is when you right click on the properties of your 2D movement, which you would have gotten from the behavior pull down, you've got to link it to the tag. The vertical will go up and down, the horizontal will go left and right. They also have another, 2D, another movement function uh, called 2D polar movement, which you can really move things all around. I don't ever use that, but I'm just using right now the 2D. And notice you actually have to click on something for that option to be highlighted. Uh, maybe I need to, let me try something here. Yeah, I just pull something out, the behavior. And you can see it highlights when you got something on the screen. So that's just a quick video showing you how to use the behavior movement in Crimson 3.0. Have a great day.